Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Flying Cat Marketing Interview Series. Today I have Pankil Shah, who is the co-founder of Outranking.ai, which is an AI writing tool. Uh, today we're going to be speaking about how to use AI in writing marketing content or how to use it to support writing marketing content. I'm really excited to talk about this today. How are you, Pankil? I am doing good. And thank you so much for having me on the podcast. Uh, it's my pleasure. And I'm super excited. Absolutely. All right. So tell me a little bit about what does it mean to have AI for content creation? Because it's a little scary. I mean, everybody's afraid of AI, right? They're saying it can't either. They're saying, OK, we're going to replace all of the writers and we're going to be able to reduce the cost because at the end of the day, resources and marketing, uh, a lot of the resources, a lot of the reason it's so expensive is because of the writers. Um, and then a lot of people, other people are saying, no way, <laughs> no way, Jose, <laughs> you can't do that. Uh, AI will never be able to write at the level of a, of a writer. And from what I understand, you're of the opinion that no, it is never going to write to the level of a writer, but it can speed up the job of a writer. So tell me a little bit about your story there. Sounds great. Uh, so let's let's rewind back, right? Like when you are creating content um, with an AI, uh, you are essentially asking it to predict your thoughts. Uh, you are essentially asking it to build out the content based on probabilities, right? Uh, because that's what AI understands. It's an, it understands math mathematics, right? It understands probabilities. So everything that it builds out is based on probability. But uh, I just what I cannot seem to grasp is when I'm writing content for a client or something where I want to be a thought leader, I want facts, right? I cannot have fiction floating around in it. That would just make me lose my credibility. So the challenge is and is always going to be there is how do you create fiction free content, which is long form blog post, right? Uh, and which is majority of the content that floats on the web is long form content. Uh, when it comes to short form content, AI can brainstorm ideas for you because it's only giving you ideas. You can change them around a little bit and make them work for you as an ad copy or an email copy or a sales copy, right? But for long form, it's significantly different because you have tones coming into picture, you have formal informal coming into picture, you have writing styles coming into picture, you have so many linguistic dramas coming into picture when you're writing long form content that uh, like inserting facts into uh, an AI and having it write proactively and understand nuances of uh, new information on the web, it's just impossible. It can only be after the fact, right? So the way we approach and the way we, uh, uh, we guide the users, our users in creating content is by active guidance through uh, research. Research is mandatory. You cannot skip it, right? And from what you said, like, right, like AI is going to replace writers, right? There was a recent study done which says that marketers now spend up to four hours in creating a good blog post, okay? Before, it was less like two and a half hours, right? Like, so people are actually spending more time now I in creating content. I think four hours is, is also quite short for like a really good piece of long form. Okay. It, it is a really short time, you said? I think it's a, it's a good average. I could write a blog post in four hours for like a 1500 word blog post. And also, does that count the research? Does that count the editing? What does that count? <laughs> That counts everything, right? Like that counts uh, everything that entails into publishing a topic, right? Like just going out, doing the research, uh, coming up with that first draft at least in that four hours and then making sense of it and then give, passing it on to the editor, right? Yeah. So I'd say like four and a half hours to a complete document, which is publication ready. Sure, it's four and a half hours. Before, like you'd say, right? Like there were a Panda updates from Google and there were many updates where plenty of affiliate sites got destroyed, right? So you'd understand that now in order for you to rank and maintain your rank, being that thought leader, having that quality content is at the paramount important, uh, importance. So you need to actually spend more time now in understanding your competition and creating content that is well-researched or wholesome or better than what's out there already, right? You cannot be writing the same thing and expect you know people to jump 
on it. So that's what AI does, right? Like it has this tons of information, but it cannot relay it in proper way. It cannot tell you that, uh, you know what, when you are creating a customer journey, uh, you need to start with funnel, right? Like, okay, maybe if, if it can guess that, then what comes into funnel is going to be again probability, right? So I, I'm not gonna go back there. So the way you actually use AI is to give it active guidance. And in my uh, opinion, it cannot replace writers. It's just impossible to replace writers when there's so many nuances of topics out there that someone needs to look over, make sure it's facts, make sure it's uh, grammatically correct, make sure that grammar leads run through it, right? Uh, all of those processes are like just, uh, it, they're, they're mandatory. You cannot skip them. And no matter how many products out there, they come out and say that we can one click generate blog posts for you. Those kind of contents will not rank or will not perform better just because it's it's a bunch of crap that's floating out. You, you cannot create content from thin air. Okay. So walk me through how you give guidance to the AI. How detailed do you write an outline already? Because I know a lot of AIs will help you write an outline and then you kind of add meat to it from there. What kind of guidance do you need to give it before you can get an article? So uh, outline isn't the only guidance that you'd need to give it uh, for quality content. So understand like when you create content, right? Uh, what is the process that you follow? You follow through a title, you follow through a description and then you come to an outline. And in that outline, let's say you ask the AI to generate outlines, it's not gonna understand the gimmicks of SEO. It's not gonna understand the gimmicks of keyword information or related searches that you need to insert into those outlines. So again, research comes mandatory. You have to go and find out what are those search intents that you need to include in your content. If you wanted to drive organic traffic, if, if it is a thought leadership post, right? Uh, you'd have your existing information from which you'd create content. So it's significantly different uh, in that perspective, but creating outline also cannot be majorly dependent on AI. Uh, there are many uh, user intent information that you'd miss out on if you were just relying on uh, AI to create your outline. So let's say once you have your outline, how do you give it active guidance to write the paragraphs within it, right? So uh, for example, when you're uh, writing about, let's say just customer journey, right? And you're building out the small, small, small sections within that huge section, what, it act, what active guidance really is, it's telling it to write content around this and stay around it. That's one. Second active guidance is by letting it know facts, which you would have to research again and then write a little bit and then ask the AI to continue upon it so that it can understand where you're going with it, what's the you know, factual information out there. So all of these information are mandatory. So what, so what has really happened now is that people are spending more time correcting their content uh, uh, because they don't follow this particular steps. They go straight to AI writing and then it's just a bunch of fluff, right? Like it just uh, starts deviating from the course and not giving you what you want. So active guidance is by influencing the AI with facts that you have researched uh, by active guidance and letting it know that this is what you really want at every corner step of the way. Uh, and going from there and creating content, right? Like if you check Google Docs, Google specifically, so they, they have an AI too, right? Like it, it, it helps you finish paragraphs. It, it helps you finish sentences, right? Not paragraphs, sentences. <clears throat> Why they have that output to such a low limit? is because only then it can give you uh, active guidance. So it has enough context to help you finish the sentence, but having enough context to finish a paragraph, that's just a <laughs> BS to me uh, because there's like three sentences, I wrote one and the remaining two that's gonna come out of AI is gonna be fluff. So active guidance is letting it know what are the facts and what you wanna write around and you want to write around those facts. So uh, there are techniques involved in writing content with AI uh, and how you write content with AI by influencing it with facts. So how does that actually speed up the process? Because it sounds like I have to write a whole paragraph anyway. So why don't I just write it? Exactly. So what we tell our audience is research is mandatory, right? So instead of using AI to write for you first, how about we use AI to research for you first? So it can collect those facts for you. And then we can build a process 
to influence the AI with those facts that we have already researched using AI. So you are now cherry picking the research from what's curated uh, from already existing content, from already facts that are out there. And then you cherry pick those facts and influence the AI to write content for you. That solves the challenge of writing long form blog post, uh, influencing the AI with factual information. So how do you get the AI to do the research? Um, because a lot of times, if you're just researching on Google, it's just gonna be you know, a lot of fluff as well, what's showing up on there. What about if you go need to go look on forums or talk to people on Slack communities, do interviews, how can the AI support you there? Absolutely, right? So Google is just one source uh, and it has, uh, let's say you analyze first 20 pages. No one can stop you from analyzing the remaining 50 or remaining thousand, right? To come up with that really quality content. Um, there are ways, so, in our tracking, we use uh, a method in which we go out there, grab the research, remove the fluff, extract the facts out of it and present it to you. So that way you can use those facts and then influence it right away. Uh, and this, this facts can come from your custom research, can come from Google, can come from your podcast video, can come from any source of truth, right? That is out there. Any source of truth that's written uh, or it's unstructured or structured data that's out there, AI can understand, pull out the nuances from it and give you facts that you can use to further influence the AI. Cool. Okay, so you have the AI do this research with, you say, go look in these specific places or use the research I've already done, pull out the main facts from here. And then, then you run it again to get it to write something? Right, so you then cherry pick those facts and say write around this fact. So it has the truth, uh, truthful information. It knows where to guide. It, it knows where to build the content around or what to build content around. And that's about it, right? Like that's what a human being would do. So let's say you'd say customer building customer journeys are strategic, right? Let, let's say that was the particular fact. Uh, it is strategic, right? So you want the AI to write around that, but without knowing that a uh, customer journey is strategic, AI cannot do that, fill in the gaps for you. So let's say if I did the research, if Outranking did the research for you, went out there, pulled out the facts and said, one of the facts to write around user journey is being strategic uh, on how you build out this journey. Great, right? Now AI has enough information to relay this information. Like why does it need to be strategic? Now AI can talk about it that why does it need to be strategic but you need to tell it that it it, it needs to be strategic right so this is uh, uh this is the approach that we suggest users take is to do the research first build, build out your bullet points of facts that you want to write your entire paragraph around and then use ai to write around it so sure you can use your own method for writing it but you can automate this as well right like so uh even when you write with uh, you know just typing it on the keyboard you're gonna build out your bullet points, right? You're gonna have this uh, this information mapped out in your head that you want to write this first sentence, then you want it to go here, and then you want it to go here, and this is how I want to end the end the paragraph, right? You have that mapped out in your head, but AI cannot map that out. So what you need to do is give it active guidance by saying that, hey, these are the couple of facts that I want to build out first. This is the fact that I want to build out second. And this is the fact that I want to build out as a conclusion uh, based upon this information. And now you have an entire paragraph that you potentially build out in one tenth of a time because the research was done for you, uh, because the information was there for you, because the information was truthful, you did not need to do fact checking. And now you have something solid going on that you can generate through AI. Mm -hmm. Love it. How do you <laughs> account for tone of voice or personality? Absolutely, right? So um, for, uh, let's say tone of voice, right? Um, and we had specific challenges on tone of voice. So uh, AI can understand tone of voice, uh, provided that you'd given it uh, some sort of significance to it. So let's say, I could say right in a tone of voice of mom, uh, and it would be okay-ish because it could mean a lot of things. A mom with four kids, a mom with a busy schedule, a mom with a job. But if you want to influence the AI with the right tone of voice, intensify an emotion in that tone. So when I'm writing um, a recipe blog post for, let's say, uh, peanut butter jelly sandwich, right? 
I would say I'm a busy, so the tone of voice should be coming from a mom of four kids who's super busy, who has challenges of what their kids like and what they don't, right? So now it intensifies that emotion that a mom with four kids will have busy responsibilities, many responsibilities, and that they need to crunch to, uh, faster to create that, to make that sandwich and give it to the, the kids, right? So I would say, yes, it can account in tone. If you have the right research and you influence it with the right tone, you can now personalize the content that was coming out of AI. And this is this is significant, right? Like everyone would have a different tone. Uh, so I would suggest that, yes, yeah, sure, you can use tone of voice um, in this natural uh, writing capabilities for uh, from coming from AI uh, with proper facts infused in it and, and giving the right context of what that tone should look like, intensifying that emotion so AI will definitely write around that, will intensify those emotions and make the content that's coming out of it more personalized. So when you say intensifying the emotion, do you mean literally writing, can you please intensify this emotion? So I would say when I put in uh, the tone of voice, uh, I literally say uh, a tone of cyborg, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, write the, uh, yeah, so I, I would say, uh, write in tone of a Terminator uh, who sounds like a cyborg or something like that. Or I would say write a recipe or I would say mom with four kids for, for a specific example, right? Like I would put the tone as mom of four kids. Uh, and that just says <laughs> that, right? Like four kids is important uh, besides being in mom. Uh, so not like telling it specifically to intensify an emotion, but the way you intensify it by adding it into the tone. So it's, you're now saying, a frustrating marketer, right? Like that could be a tone. Uh, and you could say a frustrating Instagram marketer. Uh, that could be also a tone. So intensifying that frustration, right? That's incentive, intensifying marketer's tone. And that's what you really want uh, to personalize the content that comes out. And will it remember, does it learn if you keep telling it to write in a certain tone? Does it start to do it that way in the future if you're saying i'm writing for this same client or do you have to tell it again every time uh you can save those settings right you can save that template uh if you're using the right products you could potentially even create your own uh in outranking you can create your own methods uh, so let's say you have your own uh way of writing uh, a blog post or an introduction, which has hook all the time when you're writing that introduction, you can create a method that does this specifically every time. It writes in specific tone every time. You can train the AI to do that, but it's not gonna learn from its own. It requires trading data. So sure, it can learn from its own, but the AI that you are working with, with most of the products uh, are already trained on data. Uh, most of them. And that means they're not going to train, they're not going to be trained on more data. They're just going to keep doing what they know at best, right? So it's up to you to feed in the right information to get the right output. Uh, but it's not going to under, like uh, some AIs, uh, if, if you're using GPT-3, some models do learn uh, from the data that you provided. Uh, but again, how it is used, uh, what sort of probabilities are attached with it, what sort of information, it's all just new one. So you're still going to need the same exact process going further. So based on your data and what you've seen, you said it takes a human four and a half hours to write a really good blog post, I guess, 1,500 words or something. How long does it take that same person to do it with AI? I would say approximately half or less. Uh, I'm. <laughs> there's lots of people who promise out there that you can do this uh, on the fly and 15 minutes you have a blog post post yeah that's scrap uh but yeah so you should be able to literally do this in half the time uh because the research is done for you because you can automate the process of using that research into paragraphs uh you can accomplish this task quite faster there are tools uh out there that can also help you measure the effectiveness of your content uh when it comes to web uh, and outranking scores your content based on relevant information uh, that you need in order to uh rank so you can use this automation tools but AI is always going to be a tool. You're going to have to use the tool and give it active guidance. Uh, and then you can achieve in half the time. Again, half the time does not mean that you start writing today on AI and you'll get there. You'll probably spend three times more time to understand how the AI works before you get there. But once you get there, yeah, you can 
accomplish your task in half the time. Uh, and this leads me to one other point, right? Marketers nowadays, like we've been shown the power of AI uh, and it, it's going to become mandatory for you to learn this essential skill of how to use AI uh, going further as a marketer. If you want to live in 2021 where people, are, people have started writing content with AI, uh, the best way to go about doing uh, uh, learning or I would say the best about the best way to approach this particular uh, information or uh, what you say uh, this this uh, newest tech that's out there uh, that everyone is latching onto is to understand, learn it, and then use it at your advantage. It's not going to replace writers, but it'll make you definitely a better writer. That's a very interesting point that you make, and that's also I really think that all marketers not only marketers, but a lot of different professions need to learn to use AI. There's also, I come from a background of translation. And so there were always been fears of machine translation. It's going to take over our job to the point where translators didn't even want to use it to help speed up their work. I, there are some that do, but I think that to an extent there, you can speed up the work. And then one theme that did come up a lot, which I'd be interested in hearing your opinion about is if you have something down on paper in front of you that an AI has created, even if you know that you have to edit it a lot to make it sound good, to make it sound human, does that take away from your ability to be creative? If you could have structured it totally different, uh, if you could have taken a different angle, but now you already have something down on paper, do you just kind of take the lazy route and say, okay, I'm just going to edit this a little bit? That's exactly what ha happens. And that's why we already have so much fluff and thin content out there. Uh, but what's it's going to happen, it's like even right now, there are good writers, there are bad writers, there are, there are okay writers, right? Uh, and it's just, it, it depends on where you are. Like if you're a beginner, you are going to be okay at it, not great at it, right? And, and there's going to be fluff that you put out there, which is never going to rank or create any sort of value. That's just the process of learning uh, of how to be a better writer. Um, and this is going to happen. It has been happening. People have been writing crap since lots of years, right? And it's going out and it just doesn't do anything. And this is going to be one of those cases where you have something uh, and it's not great, it's okay. And then you live with the fact that it's not gonna do much of it. Um, if you are a sane person, if you're insane, you think, okay, you know what? It, it'll rank, but it'll never rank. Uh, that's one approach. Second is like, I've heard this repetitively that it takes more time to edit the AI written content than to just write your own, right? This is why I say give it active guidance. You cannot have the AI finish up the paragraphs and paragraphs of content without you having to do much. That just means that you are writing based on someone else's thought, not yours. Uh, or in this case, AI and probabilities <laughs> uh, taking over your mind. So yeah, uh, that is, this is definitely a challenge. Uh, and this is definitely a challenge for people who think that AI will solve their uh, time constraints, will solve all the issues and will write the entire blog post for you. This is where the issue comes in. Uh, not for people who have more sort of a methodical process of doing the research first, laying out the foundation, and then writing around the foundation. Love that. Um, how hard is it to learn how to how to do that? It's really not that hard, right? Uh, and it really depends from product to product. Uh, some are more tedious, some are more easier. The easier one tends to write more fluff. Uh, the more complex you get, uh, the more controls you have over the AI and what it can do, the better it's going to be, but the learning curve is going to be a little steeper. So outranking is, again, not an easy tool to learn, but again, because it's not easy, it is capable of doing a lot of things if you learn it correctly. And learning correctly is experimenting with it and understanding how you can influence the AI with your custom facts or with things that you have in your mind to finish the course of action. Uh, and it's not that difficult. I'd say one or two webinars of any product. Amazing. So what's one key takeaway that you want our listeners to leave with? AI is not there to replace you, but to make you a better writer. So the sooner you learn how to use AI, it's going to be better for your job, or better for your career, and better in terms of learning uh, the nuances of 2021. Uh, you need to write content uh, that's engaging. 
And when it comes to long form content, there's just so many nuances that you need to uh, keep in mind when writing a content, making sure the users goes to the right flow and you lead them into the proper nurture channel, uh, lead them to the next piece which will drive conversion, like all of those information. A click for a write for me button cannot solve all of it, but it can solve majority of the challenges for you. So understand how to use AI, don't be scared of it. It is not here to replace you. It is definitely here to make you a better writer. Exciting. So everybody who listened to this and is intrigued, can you have a free trial of outranking.ai? Absolutely. All right. Yes, absolutely. There's a free trial for outranking.ai. Uh, try it out. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to drop in that chat window that we have on outranking and someone can help you out. Uh, but yes, absolutely. We are the only product uh, out there that focuses on facts versus fiction. Uh, we want to make sure that the content that comes out of our tranking uh, is not something that uh, people are going to put Fiverr gigs for, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I, I, we really want content coming out of our tranking to be factual, to be useful, and to be research driven. So I would say give it a try. Uh, there is free trial uh, and let us know. Great. I'm actually going to try it right after this call. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I really enjoyed this chatting with you about this today, Pankil. It's such an important topic today, uh, especially with content marketing requiring a higher and higher publishing velocity. Everybody's publishing more. So finding ways to speed that up while being able to maintain the quality and accepting that it's not going to do the job for you, but it's there just to support you like a lot of other AI tools. I think it's fantastic. So I appreciate your time today. And I hope that everybody enjoyed this. I think they did, or they will. Uh, <laughs> where's the best place to connect with you online if people want to chat with you more? So I'm always available on LinkedIn uh, and Facebook. We have uh, an extensive community of out uh, outrankers on Facebook. So you can join there. Feel free to DM me or my LinkedIn uh, is where I'm the most reachable. Great. Uh, thank you so much. And if uh, the listeners or watchers of this enjoyed it, please do like the episode, subscribe, leave a comment and share it with a friend or colleague. Thanks so much and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Meva, for having me uh, on the podcast. It was a pleasure chatting with you. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Bye. Bye.